This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Today's Bible reading is taken from the book of Luke chapter 6 from verse 12 to verse 49. Luke 6 verse 12 to 49 and I read in Jesus name. During those days he went out to the mountain to pray and spent all night in prayer to God. When daylight came He summoned his disciples, and he chose twelve of them, whom he also named apostles, Simon, whom he named Peter, and Andrew his brother, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon called the Zealot, Judas the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. After coming down with them, He stood on a level place with a large crowd of his disciples and a great number of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon. They came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those tormented with unclean spirits were made well. The whole crowd was trying to touch him because power was coming out from him and healing all of them. Then looking up to his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, because the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, because you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, because you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you, insult you, and slander your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. Take note, your reward is great in heaven, for this is the way their ancestors used to treat the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your comfort. Woe to you who are now full, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are now laughing, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all people speak well of you, for this is the way their ancestors used to treat the false prophets. But I say to you, listen, love your enemies, do what is good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If anyone hates you on the cheek, offer the other also, and if anyone takes away your coat, don't hold back your shirt either. Give to everyone who asks you, and from someone who takes your things, don't ask for them back. Just as you want others to do for you, do the same for them. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. If you do what is good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to be repaid in full. But love your enemies and do what is good, and lend expecting nothing in return. Then your reward will be great, and your children, and you will be children of the Most High, for He is gracious to the ungrateful and evil. Be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. He also told them a parable. Can the blind guide the blind? Won't they both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like his teacher. Why do you look at the splinter in your brother's eye, but don't notice the beam of wood in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, brother, Let me take out the splinter that is in your eye, when you yourself don't see the beam of wood in your eye. Hypocrite! 
take the beam first take the beam of wood out of your eye then you will clearly see then you will see clearly to take out the splinter in your brother's eye a good tree doesn't produce bad fruit on the other hand a bad tree doesn't produce good fruit for each tree is known by its own fruit figs and gathered from thorn bushes or grapes picked from a bramble bush a good person produces good out of the good stored up in his heart an evil person produces evil out of the evil stored up in his heart for his mouth speaks from the overflow of his heart why do you call me lord lord and don't know and don't do the things i say i will show you what someone is like who comes to me hears my word and acts on them he is like a man building a house who dug pit and laid the foundation on the rock when the flood came the river crashed against that house and it couldn't shake it because it was well built but the one who hears and does not act is like a man who is built on the ground without foundation the river crashed against it and immediately it collapsed and the destruction of that house was great this is the word of the lord thanks be to god let us pray heavenly father eternal rock of ages we thank you lord for the gift of life and the miracle of sleeping and waking up we thank you for your mercy we thank you for your grace we thank you for another opportunity to learn at your feet father we come to you this morning in humility and sincerity of our hearts oh god asking that you teach us today that you speak to us father that you drop a word in our hearts concerning our situations concerning where you want us to be at this point in time concerning oh god our purpose lord our destiny our our portion in you in the name of jesus sweet holy spirit come and speak to us come and open the hearts our hearts to accept and receive your word that will not just be hearers oh god but will also be doers of your word and will spread your word to the ends of the earth according to the power of your hands in jesus name thank you almighty god father lord i commit myself to you i ask holy spirit that you speak to me that you speak through me that you cover me that you shield me open my ears to hear you open my eyes to see you and at the end father let all glory be ascribed unto you in jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen praise the name of the lord hallelujah all right so this morning we just read the book of Luke chapter 6 from um, verse 12 to verse 49 and basically it's talking about different things different aspects of the Christian living praise the name of the Lord um, first of all he talked about the 12 the, the 12 apostles how Christ picked them and who they were so this between chapter between verse 12 and verse 16 yes verse 12 and verse 16 the bible identified the disciples that jesus chose to work with him while he was here on earth and these guys did a fantastic job which is why we got to hear the word and how you know we know what to do with the word and you know what our commission is which is to spread the word and tell the world about jesus and his love praise the name of the lord so that portion um identifies the disciples right and then from 17 it was talking about teaching and healing the beatitudes the beatitudes sorry yeah so how christ was saying that blessed are those in you know who are poor for this is the kingdom of god blessed are those who are hungry you know sometimes we often think that um you know because you're a child of god and you're christian life is supposed to be all rosy and dandy and no kind of challenge whatsoever you know just moving smoothly you know never a downtime never a down moment praise the lord but um the bible says that many are the afflictions of the righteous 
but the Lord God delivers him from them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord God delivers him from them all. What does that mean? It means that as a Christian, there will be times when you will cry. There will be times when you'll be poor, when you'll be broke. Jesus while on earth was never a rich man. Praise the Lord. He was never a rich man. But he came to show us that we can we can make it. We can live a life that is void of sin. Praise the Lord. We can live a life that is fulfilling. We can live and have a ministry, you know, have great impact in his name. Without all the riches. Just look at him. He rode on, on a donkey. He didn't have a private jet. This is the son of God we're talking about. This is God himself. In the form of man. He didn't have a private jet. He didn't have a seven bedroom mansion. Anywhere. With you know jacuzzi and pool and all of that. He could have. He could have told his father. Okay if I'm going to go to the earth. To save mankind. You might as well just give me some you know some some goodies give me some you know some kind of comfort but no he came without anything he came to show us that you know being a christian doesn't mean that you know you're not going to go through certain things it doesn't mean that oh yeah gold and everything all that is in heaven all that awaits us in heaven All the splendor, all the riches. The Bible says that even the streets of heaven are made of gold. So you can't even begin to imagine it. Alright. So here it's saying that blessed are you who are poor because the kingdom of God is yours. The fact that you're poor or that you lack some things right now. You don't have all that you want this minute does not mean that God has forsaken you. It doesn't mean that you're not a child of God. But the Bible says you are blessed because the kingdom of God is yours. It belongs to you. Praise the Lord. And so for those who weep, we go through, you know, tough times. And sometimes it's not all the time it's the devil to devil. Sometimes it's God testing you. Sometimes it's what the word of God says. That blessed are those who weep. Because you will laugh. You will laugh. His plans towards us are always good. Let's let's establish that. His plans, the, the plan of God for us, it says, I know the thought that I have for you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to bring you to an expected end. So all these things are just phases. They're just phases of life, the different phases of life that you know you would go through as a Christian. A time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to, you know, when people will, will insult you. People will backbite about you. People will talk bad about you. People will betray you. Jesus went through all of that. People will betray you and all of that. But he says, do not worry. He says, blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you and insult you and slander your name as evil because... Of the son of man. And now the version says for my sake. Or the sake of the gospel. Don't worry about all of that. It's all part of life. It's all part of life. It does not mean that God has abandoned you. Child of God. Okay. Praise the name of the Lord. It also talks about woe to the self-satisfied. Woe to those who are rich. who have Because you have received your comfort here on earth. So you see, being wealthy and all of that is not, that's not what defines you as a child of God. That's not what defines you as, as a child of God. You know, that, okay, if I'm a child of God, if God says, if, if the Bible says God loves me and I'm his child, then I should always be in abundance. I should never lack anything. I shouldn't have to go through any trial or any tribulation or any temptation. Christ went through that. He went through all that trial and tribulation tribulation to show you to show you what it is like to be a Christian it doesn't mean that being a Christian is full of pain no but like I said at the beginning the Lord God Almighty delivers his children from them all many are the afflictions but the Lord God Almighty delivers him from them all this is not baby milk here this is real talk 
This is real Christian talk. This is real, real deal. This is real deal. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So it's not to make you um, back out. It's not to make you discouraged. It's not to make you feel like, oh, okay, if this is what Christianity is, then I don't think I'm interested. No, that's not what it is. It's to make you stronger. You know, as a child, when you were born, you first of all started with breast milk, and then you graduated into period food. And then you graduated into like cereal and soft, you know, table food and all of that. And now you're cracking the bone. You can eat anything. You can eat the McDonald's, anything, whatever, pizza and all of that. That's what it is. You're getting into the crux of it. You're getting mature as a Christian. You're seeing beyond just, you know, earthly comfort. You're getting into that realm, that space where you know that no matter what comes your way, God has got your back. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He also goes on to tell us how to, you know, live amongst our enemies. He says, love your enemies. Love your enemies. Don't just be good to those who are good to you. Oh, if you're good to me, I'll be good to you. Oh, if you like me, I will like you. If you hate me, hey, yeah, right back at you. No, that's not the mindset of the Christian. He says, be kind to those who hate you. Be kind to those who hate you. Give to everyone who asks you. And from someone who takes your things, don't ask for them back. Just as you want others to do for you, do the same for them. Another version says, do unto others what you want them to do to you. Praise the name of the Lord. Be good. Be kind. Be kind. He says, love those who hate you. Even sinners. He says, if, if you keep loving only those who love you and hate those who hate you, what difference is that? The sinners do that as well. What's the, what's the identity that you're a child of God? You need to love those who love you, who hate you. Be kind to those who despise you. Praise the name of the Lord and live every battle for God. This is a life that you should live. This is how Christ wants us to live our lives. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He says here in chapter 37, Do not judge, judge and you will not be judged. Do not judge. You know, so many times you hear Christians talk, you know, start judging pastors and things like that. You just, they just carry the matter on their head. God has not called you in the place of a judge. That's not your calling. You know, I was just thinking about it yesterday. How, you know, God gives you places, maybe a ministry in your hands or a purpose and identifies your purpose or something. It gives you a mandate. Your mandate will never be to pull down someone else's ministry. Your mandate will never be, God will not give you a mandate that pulls down. No. He's a builder. He encourages. He's a unifier. He he unites people. He unites people. He wants us to come together. He wants us to come together as his children. So God would not give you a mandate to go pull people down and talk bad and you know that's not a mandate. I I see I have seen too many people go on social media to call out men of God. That's not your mandate. That's not your business. He hasn't called you to be a judge. Judgment belongs to God. That's what the Bible says. Let God be the judge of all men. Focus on your purpose. Focus on your mandate. Focus on your calling. Focus in Jesus' name. And God help us. He says, forgive and you will be forgiven. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Praise the name of the Lord. So many things here. So many things. He says, the way, the measure that you give is the measure that you receive. Giving and receiving. The measure that you give is the measure that you receive. He says here, can the blind lead the blind? But no. If the, li- the, if the blind leads the blind, what do you think will happen? Both of them will fall into a pit. Praise the name of the Lord. So, before you take out the speck in your brother's eyes, take out the log in yours. Praise the Lord. Do not be quick to judge. Do not be quick to point out someone's mistake. People are waiting to point out your mistake. To point out, oh yes, they're they're set. They're waiting. They are waiting in line. 
to, to, to see you fall. Evil. People are waiting to see you make a mistake. You decide to do something great and people are just waiting. In front of you, the chair you want. Okay, yeah, that's good. Go ahead. God bless you. But behind you, they are waiting eagerly, earnestly to see you fall. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. But God will not allow you fall. God will not allow you to be disgraced. He loves you too much. The Bible says that he has not called us to serve him in vain. God has not called you and I to serve him in vain. That's why you need to fix your focus on him. Fix your focus on him. Don't be bothered. Don't be bothered at what naysayers have to say. They never have anything good to say. Fix your focus. Fix your focus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And for those who are waiting eagerly for their brothers and their sisters to fall so they can have a loud laugh, so they can say, I told you so. You will wait in vain. You will wait in vain in the name of Jesus. The Bible says to remove the speck, to remove the log in your eyes first. Take out the log. There's a big log in your eye. Before you, before you start to judge somebody else. Before you start to wait in line. Wait to laugh at somebody. Look at your life. And do something useful with it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then finally. It talks about the tree. It says a good tree. Doesn't produce a bad fruit. A bad one either. Does not produce a good fruit. Out of the abundance of. Of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever you t- it is, you're feeling your heart. Whatever you have conceived is what comes out of your mouth. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, Guard your heart with all diligence. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. I mean, this, this um, portion of the Bible that we have just read this morning is loaded. But I'm just keeping through. I'm just rushing through it. Because I need you to understand. I need you to understand. The purpose. Why you are here. I need you to begin to. Look above mediocrity. I need you to begin. To take. Your Christian life seriously. And personally. Your Christian life is not. Generalized to be lived by all. It is your life. Your calling is your calling. It is personalized to you. It is peculiar to you. When God called you, he didn't call you in a group. He called you out of a group. When he spoke to you, he spoke to you separately. He secluded you. Consecrated you unto himself. So when you need to measure your life with something, don't measure your life with what people tag you to be. Don't measure your life with people's expectation of you. Measure your life with the word of God. Measure your life with the word of God. Which is what we have read this morning. The mindset of a Christian. The expectations of a child of God. Luke 6 verse 12 to verse 49. The expectations. What are your expectations as a a child of God? What does God expect you to do? How does he expect you to live in the community where he has placed you? And the world around you, how does he expect you to communicate with others? That's what we read this morning. The Christian lifestyle. Your lifestyle. Your lifestyle. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then he says in verse 46 that I will show you what someone who is like you, someone who comes to me, hears my word, and acts on them, acts on them. I will show you what he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. When the flood came and the rivers crashed against that house, he couldn't shake it. 
because his foundation was well built. The foundation was well built. I know I have exceeded my time on this podcast this morning, but I just feel that I need to dwell on this for a bit. As a child of God, you ought to be well rooted. You ought to be well grounded. Your foundation needs to be firm. So that when people come, when the waves come, when trials come, when temptations come, and all of life comes upon you, you are still standing strong. You are still standing strong. And that's why I said, fix your focus. Fix your focus. Focus on God. Focus on the one who has called you. Do not be carried away by the so many distractions of this world. So many of them. The distractions are just too much. Don't indulge in anything that does not concern you. Focus on your talents. Focus on your gift. Focus on your purpose, your, your, your calling. And if you're not sure what your calling is, Seek the face of the Lord. He is willing and available to talk to you. He is willing and available to direct you. He will not lead you into sin. He will not lead you astray. Trust Him. Trust Him. Dig in. Find Him. And launch out. The Word of God says, If you seek me, He will find me. Praise the name of the Lord. So if you know who your God is, if you know, if you hear the word of God as a child of God, and we act on the word, we are like a house planted with firm foundation. Firm foundation. He says, but one who hears and does not act. So it's not enough to hear the word and close the Bible and just move around as okay. That's it. I've heard the word for today. No. You always have to act on the word. And that's why each time I finish my recording, I tell you, okay, you've heard this word this morning. Go out and act on it. Act upon it. And that's how we become transformed. We are changed. Because we act upon the word that we have just heard. We are not just hearers of the word. We are also doers of the word. And so when you go out today and you see someone who doesn't like you, just love them. Pray for them. Pray for those who offend you. There's too much bickering and hatred in the world. Too much negativity. Too much negative energy in the world out there. Pray for the ones around you. Don't just bless those that love you. Bless those that hate you. This is the lifestyle of a Christian. Praise the Lord. So that Christ will be formed in you. And people will look at you and see that Christ is formed in you. Praise the Lord. Do not measure your life by the standards of men. And God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal Rock of Ages, our Father and our God, we thank you, O God, for another great opportunity to learn at your feet. Lord, we don't take any of this for granted at all. Father, we thank you, O God, because the entrance of your word always brings light and understanding. And this morning, you have taught us, Lord, how to live a Christian life, how to live a Christ-like life, how, Lord, to fix our focus on you, how to live according to your, your direction, your guidance, your instructions, O God. This morning we are asking for the grace to not just to hear the word, but to act upon it in the name of Jesus. Let us, O God, begin to act upon the words that we have heard today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That, Lord, we begin to reflect, O God, the kingdom of God within us. People look at us and know there's something different about this person because we begin to act act and leave it out we begin to express oh god your word oh god your power that has been formed in us in the mighty name of jesus christ thank you heavenly father 
we give you all the glory. Let the words that we have heard today fall, O God, on fertile ground, on fertile soil in our hearts, and let it germinate and bring forth good fruit, that all men will, will see and know that we serve the living God, and we are separated, we are set apart for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father, to you be all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. All right, there, child of God, I hope you um, had a fantastic time on the podcast. I'm sorry it took a bit longer than usual, but we needed to break this down just so that there's no confusion. And just so that when you go out there, you know exactly what is expected of you and you begin to fashion your life according to the word of God. All right, go out there and have a fantastic day. Remember, Jesus loves you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.